because he knows the, it's a 0% chance, so why even do it? So now, watch this. If the income approach is also going to be zero, then he could potentially realize that the sales comparison approach, he gets 100 grand. The cost approach is 0%, so he gets zero there. And like in my house, there's no income potential. So he said the percentage is zero there. You will notice what he ends up doing is only the sales comparison approach, which is exactly what you guys did, only we called it a CMA. And now you understand how a residential purchase appraisal comes out to be the value that you got, assuming everybody did everything the same that they were supposed to. All right. Now, I think I've thrown enough at you for today. I see eyes glazing over. I would suggest you probably read this so you get an idea and deal with it so that we can deal with questions maybe later. Currently, do we have any questions as of this moment? <laughs> Real quick, back on the, um, uh, I think it was. Well, maybe when we were talking about like the value of a house, and like you said, like the carpet and stuff, really doesn't matter. What about like if a house like had all marble floors and stuff like that? Would that like dramatically change the value if it was in three bed, two bath house compared to another three bed, two bath house that just had carpet? No, because we don't comp on floors. How do you know that the three comps you found online also don't have marble floors? Oh, I'm just saying. So like, what you got three houses that don't have marble floors versus the one that does? Is it still gonna play a factor or no? It will play a factor, but it's not going to elevate it enough to make it now 160,000 or 70,000 because it's got marble floors. It still is a three bedroom house. And you might say it's worth five grand, so maybe it's a 155. But the point I was getting at back to what I talked about a minute ago, your buyer says, I want to look at a three bedroom, two bath house. So I take him to a house that's got carpet. And then the second house I take him to has got all marble floors. But they're both 150,000. Which one do you think he would want to buy? So it's a selling factor that makes it the best house in that 150. It, and, but, now, and this is why it's an art, but to throw in what Shauna said earlier, it also could be preferential treatment or because a person who walks in may go, you know what? I don't like cold floors because I run barefooted. So to me, this marble floor actually may be a detriment. I don't want it. So I've used the word best several times. I'm just saying on average. But potentially, your marble floors could cost you a sale. And that's what I was talking about with the pool. There are people all the time, they're like, well, I'm selling my house, it's got a pool. For me, me personally, yeah. that took the house out of the running immediately because my personal preference was I did not want water at my house. I didn't so want a lake, didn't want a stream didn't want a pool. So what you thought was a better house actually was a deterrent to my wife and I at the time. Um, I can't, I can't really find it in the session, but when you guys were talking about like material costs, would marble floors be significantly higher than carpet though? Yeah, but that doesn't mean it adds value. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. 
Cost and value are two different things. Market value, market price, market cost are all different numbers. Because you've spent 20 grand putting marble floors in your three bedroom house, it's still a three bedroom house. It doesn't elevate its value enough that somebody in a four bedroom is going to go, oh, well, I want that three bedroom because it's got marble floors. Think of each one of those almost like, I don't know, a weight class. Everybody in 150 weight class used to wrestle the same weight class. You could get a really skinny guy, very muscular, and a really heavy set guy with no muscles, both weigh the same thing. They're still wrestling together. Well, oh. I'm built like Schwarzenegger. That doesn't mean he's going to wrestle in a 160 weight class. He's still 150 pounds. He's wrestling in that same class. So you spend 20 grand on your Davis home and put all marble floors in, somebody's going to come in and go, big deal. It's still a Davis three bedroom home sitting in a housing addition. I, I, I may think it may be worth 2000 more, but it's certainly not going to be the 20 grand. And this is a lot of what rehabbers do when they over rehab for the property or the neighborhood. They'll rehab a house and they'll go, oh, it'd be really cool to have ceramic tiles and backsplash and marble floors and all that. Dude, it's sitting at 46th and post. There is external obsolescence issues going on. Huh. You know, it's not going to change the value. It may make it the best looking, most attractive to the masses of three bedroom houses. But it's certainly not going to be a two hundred thousand dollar house now because you threw marble floors and spent twenty grand on it. That is literally a hard concept for even your homeowners that come in. And literally, I had a, a lady tell me once that Susie down the street's house sold for one eighty five, and I'm a much better housekeeper than her. Which I don't know what that meant. But literally, that was her, in her mind, her explanation of why her house should be worth more because her house was cleaner than Susie. And that is unfortunately a true story. Shauna? Okay, so Susie's house, she thinks her house is more. When it comes to us trying to find the, like, the value approaches, I got a little confused where it's in unit place and the quantity service method. So like I stay in um, like a housing additions where it's like pods. So it's like all the houses around me, I hate it. They all look alike and they're about the same, but they're all fours, like four houses in one little pod. Would you use the unit place value in order to try to determine the value of I, the home? I would not. Because that works in a good square foot method where houses are exact replicas of each other. Right. Why so would you want to go in and compare all of the quantities if it's the exact same house? Okay. So, so you think of, like I said, think of these as zooming in real far away. That looks like one house of 1,500 square feet. Well, the house beside it's the same house. It's only 1,200 square feet but it was built by a production builder. So it's got the same vinyl siding, the same air conditioning unit, same faucet, same type of carpet, bought the wood at the same place. So I would use the square foot method so that I could literally go $100 a square foot times 1,200 uh, square feet, so 120,000. Boom, okay. done. Now, if I was comparing a custom built home where there's only one Michael Duke home in five miles, but I've got a Ron Wampler home, I might have to use the quantity survey and go, well, Ron Wampler put eight grand in cement and it was 12 tons. Okay. Here's 24 tons, that's twice as much. So two times eight grand is 16,000. I'll put that down for the cement portion. And he used, so the, Quantity survey is best used for uh, custom properties 
where there's no other match around it. And this is what new builders would use when appraising your property. If you wanted a construction loan, they would literally go in and take the blueprints and lay it down and say, okay, here's the value based on the plans. And they call this appraising on plans. If you remember, construction loans were a short-term high interest rate because there was no asset. All they've got is a set of blueprints that say, here's what the house should look like. The appraiser would appraise it on plans because there's no house. So he would potentially use the quantity survey so he could get a value for the screws, the nails. How many uh, feet of wiring did you use? How many shingles? How many two by fours? All of that. That would be the quantity survey. All right. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. All right. That is it for chapter 16. Any last chance? Going, going, 